Hello everybody, this is Mr. Po and welcome to the new video and this video will be solely dedicated to this Peladerum you can see behind me. This is an upgrade video if you will and I'm making this out of two reasons. The first reason is the first video about the old setup got somehow very popular on YouTube and you guys probably wanted an update so right now I'm you know recording this because of that reason and the next reason is i didn't post a lot about the upgrade of the peladerium in general on social media so i want to do this you know set up a little bit of more justice and provide you guys with all the changes that happen first and foremost uh, it has to be said that this one is of course bigger than the previous one the previous setup that i had it wasn't the most successful and the most attractive and the most proper probably you know Peladerium setup because it was my initial first ever setup of the Peladerium or Terrarium uh, and I always wanted to try it and this was like a motivation to me to do it and the next motivation was the vampire crab that I have right now I got him home because I saw him at the local pet store and the conditions he was living in were far from perfect and I thought that would be a good idea to get him home and make him something better and healthy there is also more water because i have some cherry shrimp here initially there was less but i decided to raise it up and i raised the la land area as well during the process so let's talk about the land area there is more land area in this setup and i'm happy for that because it is crucial for vampire crabs to have the land area as they spend more time on land rather than in water only sometimes they dive in water but anyway they need humidity because without humidity they cannot breathe properly so the crab himself he enjoys the environment he is rather inquisitive sometimes he dives in water and explores you know things and corners uh, but recently he has become a little bit shy i don't know why uh, he prefers to hide especially during the day maybe at night he is more active let's talk about the structure well uh initially there were some stones placed uh, in, the, in the old Peladerium and they were kind of random and I didn't like it because I didn't have the hardscape materials by hand and as soon as I got the chance I got another thing, the bigger one, this one, of the same company and uh, I placed the old rocks be beneath and uh, above them and in front I placed a new, newly acquired uh dragon stones and dragon stones are notorious for their beauty no matter how you place them they look attractive and it's kind of like instant scape if you will i place them randomly i try to go with the triangular style because sometimes when i'm not sure and i think it's it applies for everyone any aquascape especially if you are a beginner or maybe if you are not even a beginner but just you know you want the instant impact one of the best ways is to go with a triangular style slightly off center and you will win anyway so that's how it turned out and the underwater land is kind of like cavey because of these dragon stones that i really like and uh, the land area consists of other types of stones that i also got from the pet store and they are neutral first of all the next is they are very lightweight so it's a good idea for the land feature and it doesn't make a lot of pressure on the bottom of the tank well the stones are attractive they differ in form and in size compared to the underwater area with dragon stones but i'm okay with that because actually uh when you look at this on the whole it doesn't look very stark you know in your face it's kind of okay maybe if i had the chance i would replace those with other dragon stones but unfortunately i couldn't find more well, plants-wise, we have some Hygrophila Semensis 53B, one Anubia that I took from uh, the pet store. It was suffering from the leaf loss and algae, but right now it is bouncing back. This is for the water uh, part, and uh, the land part uh, uses Spatophyllum, uh, the house plant. Uh, I wanted to go with more plants. I even put some palms, but this was too big for that. So I removed it and right now we have only spatophyllum. I cannot say that spatophyllum does very well here. Some leaves are getting kind of like yellowish, if you will. But in general, it's okay. It grows, you know, it grows submerged. So the roots are actually in water. They consume all the nutrients 
and that's how they grow and provide with some oxygenation. Well, as you can see, there is some amount of evaporation of water, that's why the picture is not very clear, and it is obvious because this uh, pelloderm has a lid, as our vampire crabs are notorious escape artists, they can easily escape from your tank. So that's why as the safety measure I keep it here and uh, you know evaporation accumulates because of the heater installed at the back so the temperature is around like 26 degrees as vampire crabs require higher temperatures. So humidity is at the right level, maybe a little bit too much but it is kind of warm. I have some guppies in here, just females right now because they were harassed by males in other aquariums so I had to place them here but they are doing okay. Initially there were more but some passed away, I don't know, maybe because of stress, maybe because of some other factors but anyway right now there are three and they are kind of like you know running around all the kind of stuff exploring, very active and there are a lot of cherry shrimp, some of them are very colorful like reds and blacks and also blues so I'm happy for that, they multiply regularly well, uh, about the equipment, additional equipment we have here, we have a dedicated uh, uh, air stone connected to the air pump, obviously. And this is because there are not so many plants in water and I decided that it's a good idea to provide uh, fish and uh, shrimp with extra oxygen. Well, and we have a very simple, very small uh, internal filter. Uh, and uh, this just, you know, moves water, creates some flow and of course there is a little biological filtration, if you will. For that volume of water, I think it's more than okay. Well, and the lamp. I also forgot about the lamp. This is a very simple LED lamp, so it's not very bright, but it, um, kinda, it's kind of like enough for the plants, I guess. Well, the substrate is old, some stones are old, so it helps with beneficial bacteria growth. I'm more or less uh, happy about this uh, pelloderm. It's not the bioactive one, but I'm thinking about making this bioactive in the future, especially considering that I want to upgrade further, as vampire crabs are known as social creatures and they like to socialize with other crabs. But they are kind of hard to find in our area. I asked people at the pet store if, if they could bring some, and as soon as they bring, I guess it's a good idea to have a bigger aquarium, maybe like um, 15 gallon or more. And you can have a nice pelloderium with three or five crabs, you know, socializing or maybe, you know, even breathing uh, if everything is successful. And if it's bioactive, meaning that there are some creatures that consume the leftovers and organic waste produced by other creatures, it would be even much better and it will be more like an ecosystem. Well, that's it for this update. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was much fun making this. So well, uh, stay tuned. There will be, of course, eventually more videos to come and maybe more updates to come. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching to the end. It was Mr. Four. Take care and see you next time in the next episode.